Okay. Study session. Let's move to the study session two. Now we are going to be looking at culture, socialization, social institution, family, marriage, social change, and social problem. Let's move to the next slide. So at the end of this, at the end of this, we are expected to explain what culture is, identify the basic aspects of and components of culture, define socialization and agents or the modes of socialization, define social institution and discuss family and marriage as social institutions. Explain social change and social problem. Culture and its basic component, number one. Culture and its basic component and aspects. Now, sociologists see culture as the values, beliefs, behavior, and material object that constitutes a people's way of life. That's how sociologists we see, uh, we see culture. But Edward Tyler defines a culture as that complex whole, which includes knowledge, belief, acts, moral, custom, and other capabilities acquired by man as a member of the society. And this definition by Edward Taylor is widely and usually cited by, by, by scholars. It is not immense or biological. Culture is not immense or biological. It's not hereditary. No. It is acquired. Culture is cumulative, in which case, culture is a social heritage. Culture is that, is that it is universal. Every society, every known society is cultural. Let's move to the next slide. Aspects of culture. Culture is divided into two aspects. Now we have the material aspect of culture and the non-material aspect of culture. The material aspect of culture is the physical objects or the explicit product of it. And non-material refers to the after. Now, the two, these things, these things that we can touch, our technology and the rest of them, their blood and everything, they form the material aspect of our culture. But our philosophy, the things that we believe, the morals, uh, this one form the non-material, we can't see those ones. The ones that we cannot see, we refer them, we classify them among the the non-material aspect of our culture. Let's go to the next slide. Culture has numerous components, which include symbols, language, language and values and beliefs, norms, always norms, and the social control. Every culture has symbol, which means anything that carries a particular meaning they recognized by people who share culture. That's a symbol. Anything that carries particular meaning they recognize. Sometimes, if this carry a particular meaning and it is recognized. By the people who share that culture, this thing is, becomes a symbol. That is why we have red, for instance. Red is a type of color, but it may seem, it may be a symbol of something for a particular group of people. Sir, red may be for some people. Like I, I was, so I think there was at least a instance that was given some time about pamphlet. In some cultures, if you come to a, a person's a person's uh, place and the person is absent, the day, do not see the person. You can use a palm front, palm front, and that. So that by the time the person returns back and see the you understand that this person, oh, somebody, somebody has, somebody came to visit me today, but I was not around. All right. But in another culture, palm front may not signify such. So it is what we call symbol. So it carries a particular meaning, and that meaning that it carries is what the people. Recognize it. So it is social ascription in it. Symbols are significant tools of communication and expression among the writing member. That is it. Just like how I just said, that's now from now is a tool of communication that it has communicated something to the best to the owner of the house because he has come and he saw, he saw the this he now saw the thing on the door. He said, okay, no problem. It means somebody can be here. But in another country, it will not be like this. So values and beliefs are also crucial components of every language, is another component of culture. Not about component. Values, norms, and values of standard uh, already. Let's go to the next part. Next slide. Okay. Socialization and modes of socialization and the modes of socialization. That socialization is a process through which a social group transmits her culture from generation 
to generation. So generation is a process through which a social group transmits her culture from generation to generation. Socialization gives humans behavioral traits that are not biologically determined. So socialization gives humans behavioral traits that are not biologically that you did not. When your mama born you, you do you did not come out with that kind of with that uh, call, with that attitude. You don't you don't walk by instinct. Human beings don't walk. We, we, we are cultural animals. It's animals that walk like they go by instinct. So they learn by instinct, sorry, they learn by instinct. Human beings, we don't learn by instinct. We are cultural animals, so we learn. And if by instinct, you don't even learn it, it's just natural, it's important. So through socialization, an individual acquires personality. Socialization is an experience that an individual has all through his lifetime and as in the development of his potentials and learning of cultural patterns of his group, that is socialization. Let's go to the next. Socialization could be a form of primary socialization and secondary socialization. Primary socialization, what does that mean? It means that the first stage of socialization of by individual in society. As a child is being born, you from the family, you learn so many things, you are being taught about how to greet. If you see an elder in this culture, it's approved that you must. You see an elder say good morning, say for our side, you say they will. So relatives, you be social, the child is being socialized to understand these are the things that you're supposed to do, these are the things that you're not supposed to do. So primary socialization. Second socialization, on the other hand, begins when the child starts schooling and goes on through the child's lifetime as a human being. Even as we are today, we are undergo socialization on a daily basis. There are so many things that we keep learning, you know. Learn the say education is to continue. So, uh, so secondary secondary socialization that an individual gets through formal education. So that's the situation that it gets in school, secondary school civilization, also called in groups and associations to which an individual belongs. That is this. It's not the socialization that you receive from the family per se. So the one that you receive when you have been born as a child is the primary socialization. Let's move to the next lesson. So agents of socialization. What are the agents? Socialization process is carried out through different agencies. These agencies include the family institution, the social school, the bear group, mass media and religious organization. The family is a major agent of socialization. The bear group, the friends that you keep, is also an agent. The church that you go, the mosque that you go, and the group that you keep, mass media, you listen to radio, to the television. So they are all processes, they are venues, they are agents. These are agents through which you get yourself socialized. Let's move to the next step. Like social institution. The so social institution is an organized system of rules and values tailored around specific needs and desires of human beings. One of the chief figures of underground society classified social institutions into four main categories based on the functions that they perform in the society. He came up with what we call the ideal scheme, A-G-I-F, ideal scheme. What do I say? It's the ideal scheme in which he saw the functions of social institutions as those of what adaptation goal attainment integration and latency maintenance that is the full meaning of this acronym agile scheme it is it originated from Packard's passers let's move to the next slide the adaptive institution we're talking about the, the agile scheme from Packard passers social institution so the adaptive is take care of the economic needs and the wants of the society. The goal of the is to focus on how the society is to be governed, that is politics. So by whom and from whom? By whom and from whom? It tries to maintain the society as an ongoing entity by the civil order stability. Yeah, that is the political aspect. The largest maintenance has to has the duty of encouraging the the member of the society, that's the family institution. It is the institution that ensures the continuous transmission of ideas, norms, and values to the generation of humanity. The integrative institution maintains the reinforce, uh, reinforce and integrate the cohesion of the society as well as serve as the custodians of collective consciousness of society. Among social institutions include family, 
Because sometimes I, I ask my students, I ask them, give me an example of a social institution that you know. Some of them are very looking at me. So, one of these, these are the examples of social the family, the education, the economic, political, marriage, and social institution. They are all forms of social institution. Now, let's move to the next slide. Characteristics of social institution. What, if I say a social institution, how do I know what is a social institution? What is social institution in essence? So if you characterize this, we now, uh, once I see this thing, if you are behaving like this, I know you are a madman. If you are behaving like this, I know you are a, 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 a footballer. So there are certain features that you possess that will tell us that this is who you are. So social institution, what will, what will tell us that this is a social institution? Number one, they consist of norms. They consist of values. Rules regulating conduct, rules, sanctions, rewards, organized pattern of belief, clusters of people. These are one, number one. Number two, they are centered on basic social needs and survival of the society. This means that they specifically address functional prerequisites of distant parts of society. They are well organized, they, they do not haphazardly emerge or, and, or apply. They function in an established, stable, and predictable manner. That is it. Let's move to the next. Social institutions are relatively enduring. They last. It's not as if they start to get more than no more. They are relatively enduring in nature rather than being short lived or temporary. Aggregate of institutions constitute the social system. Social institutions are like other parts of human body. Each has its particular set of function, but all are related to the whole, just like I've illustrated previously. They constitute in the process a social corpus, that is social body, of formalized and integrated role. So, they would have social, just like we, I, I always use human body as an instance. So we have different parts, the educational sector, we have the political sector, we have the family, the marriage, we have the religious sector. All of them are working to make sure that there is, there is, um, there is order in the society. So these are social institutions and all of them are working to make societies like a human body. But these are what are the parts? The, the educational sector, the political sector, the family, the other, all these other sectors. So if this one is not working very well, it will affect the other. Just like the leg. If the leg, this leg is not working, it will affect the whole body. So we make that comparison and that's our organic analogy. Let's move to the next slide. <clears throat> Family marriage are social institutions. We are so much interested in family in sociological studies. Why? Because social, we say that family is a basic social unit. That is where socialization, that is where you as a human being, our central focus of analysis, this is where you are coming out from. So family, you know, uh, is an institution. So family is an institution that helps the society to meet the needs of integration. The family reinforces integration in the society, just like we have seen from the Ajay scheme of our compasses. Family institution is universal everywhere family is. So it's often argued that the need of regular the purely biological is so the, the need to regulate purely the biological odds for sex and the getting of children to maintain the ongoing social order gave rise to the family. The need for children, the importance placed on children, child, on the person placed on children is one of the major reasons you know why uh, the family come on board you know because in various cultures in many cultures children they born, children uh, they, there's a high regard and uh, importance placed on child bearing it's often argued that the need to regulate the purely biological or this that is the, the, the reason for the or is education with Let's go to the next slide. Marriage. We say marriage as a social institution. Marriage as a basis for the family. It is through marriage that we get the family. Without marriage, no family. But I know that it's going to be a lot of contest this day because of the issue of gay marriage and the rest of them that is coming on board these days. Okay, but we're not going into that anyway. So marriage as a basis for exists in all known societies, though it's this form of political side may differ from one society. To another, to another society. The form of marriage refers to each structure. Why the political side refers to what the man or the woman or the couple or their parents must do 
in order to establish marriage as accepted by the cultural unit. The structure of marriage, what kind of marriage are you going to have? That is what is the form. If you decide what are the rights, marriage rights that you are supposed to do for you to be you know, legally approved as married people. The form and the risk side of marriage of therapy in human society determine who and how one should marry. There are two main types of marriage practices, endogamy and exogamy, and two forms or types of marriage, monogamy and polygamy. I will take a little time to do a brief explanation here. Two types of marriage practices, we say it's endogamy and exogamy. What is endogamy? Endogamy, uh, endogamy is marrying within your social group. You don't marry out, you marry within your social group. That is endogamy. Exogamy is you can be free to go outside and marry. That is exogamy. It's a marriage practice. Then we have two forms of marriage. We call it monogamy and polygamy. Now, polygamy is what we refer to. It's a plural marriage. It's a plural marriage. Where, in which case, it has what we call, under it, we have what we call the polygyny and polyandry. Polyandry is the marriage of one man to several wives. Sometimes you hear people say, um, it's a polygamous man, because to them, the man married more than one wife. No, sociologically, it is very wrong. We say polygyny. Polygyny is a man who marries a, who married a more than one wife. Polyandry is the marriage of a one woman to several husbands. The woman, he has, he has several husbands, legally married. Such marriage practice or form is not here. We are not thinking we have here, we have it here in Nigeria. So we have monogamy and polygamy. Like I said, polygamy is a plural marriage with two forms, polyandry and polygyny. Let's go to the next slide, sir. So in, the, in terms of marriage residence, three forms of marriage a uh, Christian can be identified. A marriage where the wife move, moves in to live with her husband and his family is called partially local or very local marriage. If the man moves into the family of his wife, it is called matri local or insoluble local marriage. You know, local marriage exists when both spouses establish households that are independent of their respective families. Sometimes you find that when a man marries in some cultures, when a man we say man marry instead of you residing in your place, you move directly on uh, to the wife's place. That is my daughter. The, the, but in this part of our world, if you marry your wife, the wife will come to your place and about it, that is part of your daughter. But modern times, you find out that uh, they call it the boss marriage or abuja marriage. You see, the, you see, uh, you see a girl that place, then I like you, if I like you, you give a belay, tomorrow you don't become husband and the wife. <laughs> establish your family there without residing in your area and form a family. You will have established your own. That is what oh God in your local marriage um, residence, type of residence. Let's move to the next slide. Social change and social problem. We say change is an integral part of our lives and our existence has been through stages of growth and development from childhood, teenage, adulthood and old age. Change is an integral part of our life and our existence which has been through ages of growth, development from childhood, teenage and adult, adult and old age. Social change is a significant alteration. Change of significant change. That's what alteration that word means there. Or social structures. Uh -huh. You know, in norms, values and cultural products and symbols. History has witnessed the transformation of human society from illiterate to modern social organization. Social change has to do with more modifications and more a mode of interaction of members of the society which could be planned or unplanned. Let's move to the next slide. The context in which social change occurs is a social system. So social change occurs in a social system. As such, social change takes place in a social system consequently has effects negatively or positively on the system. Social change is both a product and a sharper of social system. Let's move to the next slide. Characteristics of social change. Social change has the following characteristics. It's inevitable, it's ubiquitous, it's that is universal, it's inevitable, it must definitely happen. Let's move to the next slide. It is contagious. Social change is like a disease. Once it starts like that, it affects the other, it's multi-level. 
the social change before you know it's not only in this place, it continues like that. The rate always very rapid and fast. Let's go to the next. So factors or factors that promote social change or factors that influence social change. One, we say technology, complex interaction of environment, culture, personality, political, economic, religious, ideology, political change. These are factors that can influence social change or what we call factors that promote social change. Let's move to the next slide because of time. Social problem is, is a condition. So we now say that social problem is a condition affecting a significant number of people in ways considered undesirable about which it's felt something can be done through a collective action. So for a problem to be considered social, it must be defined by members of the society as such. The unfavorable situation must affect a good number of people in the society before it qualifies as a social problem. If it does not affect a considerable number of people in this society, we cannot say that this is a social problem. So, we, have, we make a distinction between personal problem and social problem. We say that personal problem is one whose causes and solution lie within the individual in the environment. Why social problem is one whose causes and solution lie outside the individual in the So, every social problem, there must exist an objective condition and a subjective definition. Let's move to the next slide. By objective condition, we mean a verifiable situation that can be checked as to its existence and magnitude. Why subjective definition has to do with the awareness of certain individuals that the condition is a threat to some cherished values. Social problems are thoughts socially determined. Social problems are thoughts socially determined. Any situation notwithstanding how big or small it is, that cannot be controlled by social action is not a social problem. For instance, earthquake and drought on their own are not social problems. But somebody will say, what is affect everybody? But we say, because it cannot be controlled by social action, we cannot classify it or categorize it as a social problem. So as they cannot be controlled by social action, but their effect as social problems, see the society can do something about them. Let's move to the 